Hello everyone and welcome back to Red 5 Place Global Space Pro Program. Today, we're going to be sending a very large vehicle to the moon. And I mean large. That's right, it's a fuel truck. Sorry about that, it was just my cell phone. Anyway, I'm going to do my routine staging check. You'd be surprised how many people forget to check their staging before they launch, ending up in catastrophic failure. Let me check the action groups. That I always forget, by the way. I checked them again and wrote them down somewhere and posted them on this video so that you won't forget. So anyway, this fuel truck, name says it all, harvests ore on the moon and fuels up any rovers that come by. The reason it has a claw is so it can, it can grab any vessel. And let's do the routine in a set check. MJ, get me up to 120 kilometers. Okay. Engaging ascent autopilot. Ah, Mechjib. Where would I be without it? Probably crashing into everything. Missing my rendezvous, stuff flying around in orbit. Okay, now for the fun part. Enjoy the show. Apoapsis reached, initiating orbital circularization. Initial orbit achieved. MJ, get me to the moon. Acknowledged. Plotting home and transfer to the moon. Initiating transfer burn. Transfer burn complete. MJ, set a 25 kilometer prograde parking orbit around the mud. Roger that. And remember, fellow YouTubers, always remember to check your inclination as soon as you enter a new celestial body sphere of influence. You don't want to enter retrograde, or else there could be dire consequences, especially during rendezvous. Munar parking orbit achieved. Thank you, MJ. Now to land this thing. Well, I've got plenty of Delta V left. Now to eject those unnecessary boosters. Because, well, I won't be needing them during the landing. In fact, too many rockets on board. It makes it hard to place it over itself. I don't send solar panels. Better want to land. This land's going to be equated to make things easy. MJ, get me to that landing spot. Okay. Engaging landing autopilot. 
Please fasten your seat belts. Ha ha, nobody's in the truck. But on the other hand, it is programmed to say that in case somebody is in the vessel in question, like if we're dealing with the lander here. And pretty soon I'm gonna need to reject that big rocket boost with the solar panels, leaving it up to those three smaller rockets to touch the ground, and I'm gonna need to tip that truck over on the wheels, of course, when it lands. So, hope this works. I sure hope those small little boosters have enough delta V in them to make a soft landing, because if not, I may end up losing the truck, and it'll be all for nothing. Let's hope these million Kobo credits are worth it. Come on, come on, come on, land. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, and just hold it together. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Stop landing, and come on. You got it. Touchdown. Now to put the wheels on the ground. Spin it a bit. It's so that the wheels would be more inclined to hit the ground, so it wouldn't fall upside down. Better check out the truck, make sure there's nothing important, and... Exactly the way I put a wide base on the truck, so that it'll be easier and more stable to drive. The truck itself seems to attack. Boosters? <laughs> who cares? Anyway, let's take it up for a spin, shall we? MJ, play my rover drive playlist, please. What the heck? Who put this in my playlist? MJ, switch it off. Now. Sorry about that. Anyway, now that we've driven away from the booster debris a bit, let's stop it and test how well it can mine ore and convert it to fuel, oxidizer, and mine propellant. Okay, turn on the radiators, drills, and the solar panels. Remember them? Action groups. Let's time up a bit, see how much ore we can get. Wow. Now let's convert it all to resources, while keeping the drill on, so that we can still collect ore in the process, or in a fully loaded truck, just to see how well this could do. I find it faster and more convenient to use only either the drills or the converter at the time, not both at once, because one, they drain a lot of power, two, they take a toll on the radiators, and three, the conversion rate's very slow, which kind of stems from the radiators taking a toll. Huh, not bad. Or tank may need some filling, but otherwise not bad. Now if a spacecraft comes by, the truck will be ready for it. Now to stash the radiators. Let's see how the antenna are doing. Since you got plenty of RTGs, we honestly don't really need the solar panels when we're driving. Now that we've established its mining capabilities, let's drive. One another thing, just because it didn't come with a lab, does not mean you can't do science. There's a hotkey for that, I believe it's the 8 key. You can do science and then transmit it, due to the solar panels and buttload of RTGs. Transmitting all the data at once is plausible. So anyway, off to a good refueling location. I'm at five, have fun, stay tuned for my next awesome craft. Have a nice day, everyone.